is treat someone as you want to be treated. So in math, whatever you do, there's this thing called an equal sign, and it separates it into two different sides. And you have an algebraic expression on the left, an algebraic expression on the right. So whatever you do to the left side, you must do to the right side. Okay, so you treat the left side as you would the right side. You can't just subtract two from the left and not subtract two from the right. So that's kind of the golden rule in math. Now we're gonna relearn, and you guys have learned this before. These are very simple, like the very beginning of algebra, trying to find a missing value. And I even will give you permission on this because it's so simple and most of you are seniors, on at least this page, I understand that there's not much work, okay? Like, what plus four is six? Two. Now, in algebra, it would look something like this, and all that means is what number plus seven is three, right? So instead of a box, we put a variable, x. What number minus four is 10? So 6 minus 4 would be 2, so not 6. It's going to be 4 bigger, right? Because you're going to add 4 to both sides. So 14 minus 4 is 10. What number minus 4 is 24? 6. What number, when you divide it by 4, do you get negative 10? I'm going to go ahead and put a negative sign. Because I know negative divided by positive is negative. So what divided by 4 would be negative 10? Negative 40. And you may not realize it, but you're all doing algebra at this very moment. What number plus 3 is not? 6. What number, when you subtract 15, do you get 9? 24. Okay? And if you're not good at spitting out numbers in math, you could just add 15 to both sides. So the answer is whatever 9 plus 15 is. What number times 3 is negative 9? Negative times a positive is negative, so I need a negative. 3, yep, negative 3. What number, when you divide it by negative 15, do you get 2? Negative 30. A negative divided by a negative. What number plus 10 is negative 2? So if you minus 10 from both sides, it's easier to think about. Minus 2, I should say negative 2. And negative 10 is negative 12. We'll check your work. Negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. And the word is in math, that, that makes an equal sign. What number minus 10 is negative 2. 8. Good. 10 times what? We should have put a time symbol in there. 10 times what is negative 2? Tricky. Like, ooh, 10 times what's negative 2? Well, the answer is going to be negative 2 divided by 10 which reduces to what, negative one-fifth? In other words, 10 times negative one, that makes our negative, and 10 divided by five makes our two. What number divided by five is negative 12? Or what is negative 12 times five? Negative 60. What number, is that a plus sign? What number plus four is negative 7. Or what is negative 7 minus 4? Same. Negative 11. What number minus 4 is negative 7? Or what is negative 7 plus 4? Same. Negative 3. A negative 3 and a negative 4 make a negative 7. Negative 7 times what is negative 21? Or, what is negative 21 divided by negative 7? 3. 
what number divided by negative 2 is 7? Or what is 7 times negative 2? Negative 14. Addition and subtraction are inverses of one another. So, like I'm trying to teach my daughter most, or division. And I say, what's 3 times 2? She says, 6. And then I say, well, what's 6 divided by 3? She's like, huh? But when I say 3 times what is 6, she understands. So that is just filling in the blank. the rest using actual algebra. And I do give you permission on these one steps that if you don't want to show work, it's fine. But here we have what, what plus 7 is 3. And we're going to actually solve it. I do to both sides. I try to isolate the x. So I would, instead of plus 7, I would minus 7. Those cancel. My answer would be 3 minus 7, negative 4. Check your work. Negative 4 plus 7? Yeah, that's 3. Here, 8 plus A equals 13. How do I get the variable by itself? Subtract 8. Cancel those. Whatever you do to, do to the left, you do to the right. So A is 13 minus 8. 5. Now this is confusing. C minus a negative. I would encourage you anytime you see two negatives together just to change it to a plus. To me that is way less confusing. That means the same thing. So I'm trying to get the C by itself now. So I have a plus 12, the opposite operation would be minus 12. If you have $5 and you spend 12, you're, you owe someone $7. What number minus 12 is 9? Well, same thing. We're trying to get B by itself. It's a minus 12, so I at 12, and I get B, 9 plus 12, 21. Is 21 minus 12, 9? Yes. Negative 1 plus what is negative 19? So I need to get rid of the negative 1, so I would add 1. Because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and anything plus 0 is itself. And then I'd get D, negative 19 plus 1, now it's negative 18. Number 6, anytime you have a plus with the negative, you could change that to just minus. If that's less confusing, that's plus negative. When I was in school, I liked plus negatives. I don't know why. Trying to solve for G, so I add 4. Opposite. It was a negative 4, now I do a plus 4. <coughs> this 7x equals negative 14 of 7 in front of the variable, that means multiplication. So 7 times what is negative 14? And you're already spitting out the answer negative 2, right? But math, to undo multiplication, we divide. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 1 times x is just x. And negative 14 divided by 7, negative 2. Same thing here. Negative 8 times what? Negative 44. We divide by negative 8. I can tell you the negatives will can. I get 44. And usually fractions reduce. 
right? They're both even. I could divide by two. Looks like I could divide even by four. So if I divide 44 by four, I get 11. Eight divided by four, I get two. 11 halves, 5.5, .5, same thing. Number nine. Everything to this point, the variable has been on the left side. Sometimes the variable is on the right. Sometimes the variable is on both sides. You have, any time you want, you can take everything and just flip it around. So if you like this better, that is an allowable property of math. You can just flip the whole thing around. That's okay. Maybe that makes more sense. 5 times what is negative 12, divided by 5, and in this case, 5 and 12 will not reduce. Any questions so far? Or if you wanted to leave it on this side and divide both by 5, you would just have to see on the other side, then you can flip it. It doesn't matter. Fraction means division. So this says what number is divided by 2 to get 9. So I'm going to multiply 2. And I get B is 9 times 2, 18. Here, the negative sign, someone would have taught me this a long time ago, or the 2. So I could, if I wanted to, I could write this as D is negative 50. I'm trying to get the D by itself. I'm multiplying. Those cancel. D negative 15 times negative 2 is 30. What number divided by negative 5 is 8? Multiply both sides by negative 5. Eight times, sorry, it looks like a decimal point. Eight times negative five is negative 40. So when you guys were freshmen, maybe eighth grade, you learned how to do these. And at the time, it probably scared you, and you probably, oh, wow, well, that's so hard. And I even using these, I'm sure a lot of you are bored. If you're not bored, and you have no idea what I'm doing, please practice that IXL. It'll be very beneficial. We know what the order of operations are, don't we? Yeah? We have, first, we have grouping. I usually call this parentheses. My staples in the way. They use the word grouping because sometimes you see the word, uh, you see a bracket, and a bracket should be treated as a parenthesis, but it's not quite a parenthesis, so they call it grouping. Exponents, multiplication, and division. Those are at the same level. And I learned this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. PEMDAS, you may have heard. There's many ways to memorize it. But when you're solving an equation such as this, you actually go in opposite order of operations. Because you're undoing. If I drive five blocks away and I want to come back to where I came, I have to undo everything I did. If you're in a Word document and you're typing and you want to undo, it'll go back left and left and left every time you push the undo button. So when you're solving an equation, you actually do order of operations backwards for the most part. So like two times what plus seven is three, you're actually going to do the addition and subtraction first. So plus good, minus 7. And you know what? This is um, 
a senior level math class, you don't have to actually put the minus seven, like you could just put two X, three minus seven, negative four, right? This is, I mean, if you guys were uh, eighth graders, I'd want to see the minus seven, minus seven. And then divide both sides by two, and you'd get X is, So we first did subtraction, then we did our division. And this would be enough work for me. You don't have to actually say minus seven, minus seven, divided by, divide by two. The next one I will show that just now. Negative three is six. We want to do addition and subtraction first. We're trying to get the x by itself. We have a minus nine, so we're going to do plus nine on both sides. Six plus nine, 15. Then we're going to do multiplication and division. Negative three times what's 15. I'm going to divide by negative three. X is negative five. Not a bad idea to plug it back in. Negative three times negative five is 15. 15 minus nine is six. Later on in the class, we'll review quadratics again. Remember, if you had like something to the second power, there's two solutions, third power, three solutions. But right now, we're just going to go through lines. These are all linear. What number divided by three, take away four, is negative 11? Well, I would want to add four to both sides. Negative 11 plus 4, negative 7. If you need to put plus 4, plus 4, feel free to. Plus 4, plus 4. And then what number divided by 3 is negative? I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. You get negative 21. If you want to put times 3, times 3, feel free to. I probably won't show every single step because this is mostly seniors. minus sign to the 9, and I'll show every step on this one. Multiply both sides, get a 9, 9 times negative 9, negative 81. Check my work. The negative is going to make the 81 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 2. This is all coming back to you. Now here, there is no addition. I can't minus one because it's I could divide both sides by negative two. I'm gonna have fractions. We're encouraged doing that at the very beginning unless you love fractions. I normally do is I distribute in. Negative two times x is negative two. Negative 2 times 1, negative 2. Now you could have just divided both sides by negative 2, but then you have negative 9 halves, and then you have to add, it would just be a lot of fractions. So that's up to you. Add that, and I get negative 2x, 2 plus 2 is 11. Is 11, divide both sides, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, to 11 over 2. So here, I did plus 2, plus 2. I just didn't write it down. Here, I did divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. And for your work, this is enough. Here, I can't add 3 to both sides because these are grouped together. They're in the numerator together. But I can multiply both sides by 8. So I can multiply this by 8. And that by 8, and I get 16. Both sides, 16. It's completely bored. Probably because you know this already. I'm sorry. Minus 1 is 5.
Well, add one to both sides. From here, you could multiply both sides by 4 and then divide by 3 on both sides. Or you could divide both sides by 3 and then multiply by 4. Or you could do it at the same time and just multiply by 4 thirds. And then the 4 and the 3 cancels all at once. You have a fraction. This is like 6 over 1. We learn when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerators and denominators. 6 times 4 is 24. 1 times 3 is 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So 3 fourths of 8. So 3 fourths of 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. That's how I could break 8 into fourths. Three of those would be 6. So 3 fourths of 8 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. Any questions on this so far? Can you solve one and two step equations? set equations. And then tomorrow we're going to do multi-step. And I think the multi-steps is what really confuses students and the thing that I have found that kids are missing. Please use this time to actually understand how to do one and two steps. You need to know that for college. So again, rating, one, you have no idea how to solve a one and two step equation. Two, you need help. This is a very small class, please ask me. Three, you understand. Four, you could also probably. And I'm guessing because it's review from eighth grade, which probably all are fours. And that's the best way to really learn something. When you already know it, and then the teacher says what you already know, it sticks even more the next time. That's why when you get to college, I encourage you, before the professor teaches, read the section of the book. You'll hear it first, and then you'll hear it again from him or her, and it'll make so much more sense. All right, things to help you would be J4. This will make sure you know how to do two-step equations. IXL, get that to a 90. I don't think that'll take long. Please ask me for help. So solve two-step linear equations. And your homework. It's 8.30. There are 31 days in this month. It will be due tomorrow. Beginning of class. And I'll say, do you have questions? So please get in the practice of having this done. Don't wait until you come in the next day. And got it in your box. I need it. Well, once I say, are there any questions? If there are no questions, that's usually when it's due. And then I try to greet it that day. Previewing it. Just make sure I prepare you. Looks like these are one steps. These are two steps. Two 
two steps. Oh, that's weird. We didn't really cover that, did we? I'll do the first one for you. Eight less than. So this means eight less than five times y is is equal. Eight. Now that's not how you're going to like translating it to a number right now. Eight less than five. Learn less than. When you say eight less than, track it on the end, right? Five y minus eight is 18. Eight less than five times y is 18. Does that make sense? The key word here, the only difference between now and what we learned before is when you see the word is in math, that usually means equal sign. So it's the same thing as the expressions I taught you, but now we're going to have two expressions because of that is, which is an equal sign. All right, that's all I have for you. Um, remember, I will upload this on the website. If you would like to see it again or hear it again, it'll be there. And I'm planning on doing that all throughout the semester. And I usually do it at the end of the block. So if you're gone, you may just want to go to the website and look at the videos, if, if they're there yet. I'm trying to stay on top of it. All right, that's all I got. Good luck.